I'm Dean Gomez, and I'm the project manager for Youth Arts. And Youth Arts is supports out of school time art classes for middle and high school kids. Uh, the priority for the program is to uh, to serve kids who have little or no engagement in the arts. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about it. Uh, the way this evening is going to unfold is I have a maybe 40 minute-ish PowerPoint, and really all the PowerPoint is is taking the highlights from the guidelines. Um, but I've added a few little tips and uh, you know, reminders throughout, throughout. I do have examples in the budget. There are certain things in the budget that uh, are usually very quirky, so I do have those in the PowerPoint. So I'm going to do that. And then I've got two uh, experienced teaching artists who are going to um, Tony Bowman in the back. Okay. <laughs> and Karina Del Rosario, who is not here yet. Uh, and so for the last hour or so of this evening, what we're going to try to do is this Basically, we're going to try to each take one of three of the elements in the application and just uh, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that, at each table so you can kind of rotate around each table and get a little more information or ask questions about those particular elements. Um, and that's pretty much going to be concluding the evening. But just for the sake of those who came in a little bit later, there are two binders that are circulating around the room and those have sample applications. I did try to pick applications from individuals, from organizations, small budget, large budget, and in different art forms. So, um, so you can go through. And those binders are actually in my office. You can come and see them in the Okay, so, um, and so can I get a show of hands of people who have uh, applied to new arts before? And anybody who's first time applying to the Youth Arts? Um, fantastic. All right. Um, yeah, and if you didn't sign in, uh, it would be great if you did. And there are, again, there are some copies of the guidelines are up front, but they're not stable, but there is a staple there. Um, it's really hard to staple, but just let me know. Um, okay. And I'm using a, another laptop tonight, so let's hope I don't. I know what I'm doing here. <laughs> and you know, uh, chairs are in the back and in the front, so uh, just um, wherever you can find a spot. They're very light chairs, so they're not they're not heavy to carry. Okay, and again, um, the and I'm sorry, this is crooked. Is that, does that bother people? Is it too crooked that it's annoying? Okay. Um, so again, it's arts training, skill building. Uh, <clears throat> and then kids for kids to just get together. There's similar ages. And uh, again, the priority is really for kids who have little to no engagement in the arts. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about... Um, the outreach, because that's that's something that the application does ask you, is what is your outreach plan to those particular kids. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. And this is an annual program. You can, um, you can apply every year and get funded every year. Um, the applications, uh, the requests are up to a, $10,000, but anything below, we ask that the awards not be less than $2,000. Um, although we do get them, we do get a request for less than $2,000, but it's ideal if, if it's, if it's $2,000 at minimum. Um, the newest applicant who can apply to youth arts uh, are colleges and universities. I, are there any colleges or universities here tonight? Oh, okay, great. So, um, Cornish. Cornish. Okay, so uh, Cornish has applied before and they got funded this year. Um, uh, so, since they're the only ones that you know what the parameters are, so I don't need to go through those. Um, 
And also the other new element, it's not so new, this is the second year we've done it, but I am reminding people, uh, for work samples, you can include a web address, all right, so that you don't, you know, we used to have you submit a DVD, it was just a nightmare, but so now, <laughs> for you and for us, so now you can actually enter a web address, and the instructions are in the work sample page. So when you get to that page, every page has instructions in a gray box at the top, and in the top it'll tell you where you can at, where you can put the address. Okay. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I have a question about the work samples. Uh -huh. Since so the application, the work samples of the teacher artists and the student participants, mm -hmm. what if the student participants have more experience in their work? Um, then teaching artists can submit samples uh, of work that kids have created that he that he or she has worked with in the past. But it has to be that particular uh, teaching artist. Not that particular. But like the program has like in other areas. Could you use like program samples? Like mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because basically what the reviewers want to see is what the kids have right. exactly. work, you know, with that person right. you know, okay. as a result of working with that artist. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, and so, uh, you know, one of the things, whoops, sorry, that uh, this year we have some new elements to our um, application. And uh, <clears throat> Lara Davis, whom some of you might know from Creative Advantage, do most of you know Creative Advantage through our program, I mean our office, um, what we are trying to do in the office is we're trying to um, actually bring all our youth-related arts education programs together. So we have youth arts, we have creative advantage, and then we have the work readiness uh, arts program. And so we're trying to actually bring those all under the umbrella of creative advantage. And one of the steps <laughs> that we're trying to do is we're trying to align some of the content that we ask in all across all the programs and so that's why there's some new elements in the application um, <clears throat> the first one is we've revised what used to be called the schedule in the former youth arts application uh, and basically it's just a breakdown of what activities and how we're going to roll out for the life of the program uh, we're now calling it a teaching plan uh, you are, or those of you who work, who are the teaching artists or who work with teaching artists, uh, it is a teaching plan. So it's really just breaking down the sessions um, or activities. And so, and I think we, we did, I did make a, uh, a slide of that in the PowerPoint at the end. So you can at least take a look at it if you haven't yet started your application. Uh, the second one is a revised series um, of questions that have to do with artistic goals, and artistic goals have always been part of the application, so that is not new. Um, <clears throat> certainly that is, that is definitely an item that your teaching artist can give you in terms of what are the goals, whether it's music or dance or film, whatever the art form is. Um, life skills, and I don't have that piece of paper right in front of me, and we'll talk about those more maybe when we get into the um, uh, into the breakout groups, but basically those interpersonal skills, those team building skills, um, planning, time management, all of those kinds of skills, those are just right off the top of my head. Um, again, I think we used uh, these components in the previous application. We've just kind of regrouped everything so uh, and, and entitled them something different, differently. So, um, and then the last one is the learning environment. And that is more about any kind of routines that you establish um, for your program in terms of just you know having a circle time or you know icebreakers or debriefing any any sort of routine uh, aspects of your program. And there are more. Uh, I can be more elaborate when we do the breakout groups, but that just gives you a little flavor. Um, we also have added a glossary where you can find definitions for all the new elements and maybe a few new terms. And again, those are, uh, I believe, on our website. And um, you know, we have to revamp the online system. So, um, and some things are actually missing on the application. So I'm not. I, I they sh the glossary should be on there, but I'm not guaranteeing it. But it is on our website. 
Okay. <clears throat> And um, so this is what the teaching plan uh, form looks like on the application. And it is different. For some of you who have applied before, uh, this will look considerably different. But it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, uh, I think we had date, we had uh, activity, and we had staff assigned. And, and we didn't have location, but we had those kind of maybe three things in the middle. And we added, I think, supporting, I think we added goal is what we added. Um, and But it is explained more, uh, the instructions are uh, more thorough than what I am giving you at this very moment. But these, this is one of the new elements in the application. It does look totally different from previous years. Um, and the one thing I can tell you, if it's if if you, for instance, are doing a year-long program, and so you know you're going to have um, like a lengthy series of, um, of boxes to fill, you can cluster uh, like two or three weeks together if if they're going to be learning the same thing, but it takes two weeks to get through that particular curriculum. Then you can cluster them together and so say, the next two to three weeks, we're going to do A, B, and C. You can do that, and that kind of minimizes how many boxes you have to fill. Is that example anywhere online? You know, that is a good question. I do not know, but um, but if that is something that's helpful, yeah, I can uh, I can ask uh, Lara to maybe post it on the website. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. It is available. It is available. Oh, under Creative Youth. Yes. Is that where you found that? Okay. Yeah, it, yeah. If you go to create, you know, we have our website's completely new too. We have all these new things. So our website is has been revamped. So when you go to Creative U, you'll find Youth Arts, Creative Advantage, and RAP, the other program. And so you'll find all of these new materials in there and glossary and so forth. Thank you for uh, letting me know that. Okay. So that gives you an idea of the, the, the way it's going to look on the page in the application. So what I'm going to do, these, these next two sections, um, one is the applicant eligibility, and that's what we're going to do now. And then the next, um, the next page will be about um, uh, project eligibility, so that you have a good sense of what, um, what, what's covered by this money and, uh, and what is it. So for the applicant, um, must include or you must be a teaching artist with at least one year of experience. Um, if you have, you know, if you've got maybe a couple or two or three teaching artists and you have one who has less, then what the reviewers want to see is that there are more experienced teaching artists working alongside someone who has less than a year. Uh, but I think the reviewers tend to want to have at least a year of classroom management and curriculum and assessment and all of those kinds of areas uh, as track record for the teaching artist, if, especially if they're working solo. Um, uh, be an artist, an arts cultural organization, a service or community-based agency. Uh, um, you know, it says with nonprofit status, you do not have to have a nonprofit status, but you do have to have a not-for-profit structure in your in your agency, um, uh, or you can go under a fiscal sponsor. You know, those are all totally okay. Uh, and again, colleges and universities, and they do have parameters, but we have one person, and she knows what they are. Um, and again, preference is given to applicants. Uh, who apply who are Seattle residents. Uh, if, you are, if you are not a Seattle resident or your organization is not Seattle based, you are eligible to apply. The project has to happen in Seattle for a majority of Seattle kids. So you can apply and you are eligible. So this is about the project. Um, And uh, again, these, uh, these funds support projects for middle and high school kids only. Um, 
and again in Seattle. Um, it's arts training that happens uh, out during out of school time, so that certainly includes after school, it includes uh, weekends, it includes evenings, winter breaks, spring breaks, summer, anytime kids are not in school. Uh, so it's not just after school, it's really anytime they're not in school. Uh, and the venues can be anywhere. Uh, it's, again, it's not restricted to a school building, it can be anywhere. Um, can the student, or well, can the student age kids be mom's kids that aren't actually enrolled in the school at the moment? Um, you mean like grad, high school graduates? Is that what you mean? Well, or, no, I, well, I just meant a, you know, uh, the age bracket, but not in school. The proper age bracket for kids that aren't actually in school, but are, are homeless. And, and oh, homeless. absolutely, yes. Yes. Or the facility or the yes. Yeah. Okay, Absolutely. Yeah, and I guess this would be a good um, juncture to just add this um, in the budget for particularly for kids, very highly at risk kids, homeless kids. Um, you can request funds to uh, pay the kids stipends to encourage them to participate. Uh, because it is a just very, it's a really challenging population, and having them come on any kind of regular basis is um, a struggle. So uh, that is the single only youth population that we will let you that that the funds can be used for stipends. Otherwise, we're not going to it, uh, give you money to pay any kid to come and take a uh, uh, a class in the program. So it's well, really highly at risk. Mm -hmm. Highly at risk kids, mm -hmm. okay. homeless, street youth, uh, just you know, highly, highly at risk kids for whom coming to these programs is just uh, it's imperative. I mean, it's really uh, you're usually it's uh, an agency, a service agency that's um, that's already um, serving these kids, and for them, it's really great to touch base with these kids on any kind of regular basis, so we feel that the stipend really encourages them uh, to participate, okay. Um, okay, where was I? Yeah, so the project dates that are covered for this, for this cycle would be from September 2016 through September of 2017, so it's that whole year, and your project can take place any time <coughs> during that year. It does not have to be the full year. It can be two weeks. It can be three months. You know, wh however you design it. <laughs> okay. It can be summer. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. It can just be summer, and that's fine. Or it can just be after school during the school year. Any combination. Um, and here's the uh, include outreach recruitment plan for underserved teens. So again, uh, the more specific you can be about who it is that you're going to do outreach to, the better. Because uh, that's what the reviewers want to know. They want to know, I'm going to be uh, partnering with the interagency school on Capitol Hill in the Central District. Uh, I'm going to be making three uh, demo visits where I'm going to bring other kids who have participated. You know, you're really taking time for personalized outreach and how are you going to do that to really in try to engage the kids and encourage them to participate. So that's how specific you want to be, exactly how you're going to get the kids to participate. Um, certainly our funds will also pay for bus tickets or any form of transportation. Again, that is a huge barrier for kids to get to programs, and these funds will pay for that. Be it, as I said, renting a van, you know, whatever. You know, bus tickets, um, sharing transportation with a Y. I don't know. I mean, that's why those partnerships are so important, because if you partner with someone who has transportation, then that's um, an in-kind donation from your partner. Um, and I'll talk more about in-kind when I get to the budget. Um, 
Okay, so uh, another uh, requirement for the application is uh, artist resumes, art, teaching artist resumes and work samples, uh, which there was an earlier question about work samples. So the resumes, you want to make sure that the teaching artists um, include uh, all of their experience, the age group they've worked with, uh, how long they've worked, if they worked alone or they worked in a team. Um, if they worked with the age group, uh, that, that is the same as the proposed project. That's the most ideal. Uh, because one of the things the reviewers are looking for is if it's a, uh, a program that serves high school kids, but the teaching artist has only worked with middle school kids or younger kids, it's a very different animal uh, working with uh, younger kids or working with older kids, and then you're, you're switching that. So that is one thing that the reviewers are looking for. Uh, so you, you want to encourage your teaching artist to include that in their resume. Um, and uh, the work sample, again, um, the instructions in, the in that gray box at the top for the work sample page gives you really specific information about, um, and it is confusing. Uh, it's confusing because we're, we're, it's easy for us to understand because we deal with the work samples all the time. Um, but it's really five minutes is total what you have to submit. And five minutes translates differently for different art forms. So it's uh, five minutes if it's um, you know, a DVD sample, five minutes if it's an audio sample by itself, just by itself, it's a full five minutes. It could be less than five minutes. Um, if you're submitting photographs and a literary sample, um, then the uh, images would be four images and it would be five pages of literary samples because if all you were submitting were literary samples it would be ten pages or if all you were submitting were images it would be eight so whatever the five minutes is for one for just one art form you just cut it in half whatever it is you know so if you're doing half and half uh, and I can explain it to you if you uh, if you call me. It, we tried to explain it in the application, but it's still very confusing people. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I was curious that I was confused too. So, say you have uh, two video clips, mm -hmm. and one's two minutes and one's three minutes. Mm -hmm. We can still submit both, right? Yes. Yes, okay. you can submit both because it's five minutes total. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if one of your teaching artists. Um, is a certified art therapist and the work samples are like part of the children's medical history, therefore they're not available. Mm -hmm. um, so there wouldn't be, um, she wouldn't be able to submit work samples because of the confidentiality issue. We can talk about that maybe um, separately. Okay. Yeah, because it's kind of a unique circumstance. Right. Okay. Yes. Some of the work samples are like audio, uh, music, therapy, but I'm not sure if the, you know, the panel will be able to understand everything. Can you submit lyrics with it, or is that a separate piece of... Oh, sure, you can submit lyrics. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I just wanted to... Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that five minutes for the organization and the artist, or five minutes for organization artists? Yeah. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go back to the stipend. Is that independent oh, sure. of the grant? Yeah. Right? That's included, whatever you're asking. So you want to include it. If you're asking for 10000 then you want to include that check. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. One more question. Sure. On the biography of the supporting artists, mm -hmm. like, um, oh, we use a routine roster. Like, sometimes they're available for, you know, the times that we have, and then sometimes we use other ones because they're not available. Can we, is it, like, conjecture? Like, do you think these, this is the artist? Oh, when you don't have artists confirmed, they're yeah. not yet confirmed. Yeah, or they confirm and sometimes they change. Mm -hmm. And they change. That happens. Yeah. Um, so a couple of things. Uh, if you have multiple artists, let's say you have ten artists, you have a year-long project, and you're gonna uh, you're gonna hire ten artists. Um, <clears throat> what you can do is submit short uh, biographies, short bios <clears throat> of each artist, and if there are some key artists and star artists that you want to show the full resume, you can, but you can't also just show bios. You want to make sure that those bios include really important information like how many years, 
what is the art form, work by themselves, what age group. Those are key pieces of information that you need to put in the bio that really informs the reviewers about their, uh, their track record in the industry. Um, what was your other question? I'm sorry. Um, oh, but just like, so if, I mean, we, we, can sub we can submit who we think is for ah, yes. at this moment. Yes. But if we have to replace that or just. Right. Um, yeah, so if you have not yet confirmed, or let's say you have half of your artists confirmed, uh, or your artists aren't confirmed, what you want to do is the artists that you are that you are hoping to get, you do want to get their resume or bio and submit it alongside maybe you know three to five other artists, and you can say this is this is the caliber of art artists and their work that we are looking for, we probably will secure one of these three or four, as an example. Uh, but we do not uh, <coughs> want to submit it without, if we don't have the artist yet confirmed, we want to submit a uh, work sample. And so you do want to get that, even if it's not confirmed with the artist, just so the reviewers have some sense of uh, who you are looking for and the kind of work. Because all the reviewers are uh, teaching artists, they're arts administrators, they lead youth service agencies, they're very familiar with how most of these programs operate. Um, and they don't always know uh, the applicant or the teaching artist, but if you can submit some information, some just the basic uh, information, it's really helpful for them to then make an assessment. Um, that answer your question? Yes. Thank okay. You. Um, okay. So let's see. So what um, what youth arts will not fund, and uh, so it's it, this is out of school time. So in school is not uh, appropriate for this funding uh, pocket. Um, you cannot uh, propose to do benefits or fundraisers. That includes what happens mostly, most of the time is people will submit for a project and then for their event, they'll say, and we're gonna have an event and it'll be a fundraiser for X organization. You can't do that, not even for the event. Uh, because these are tax dollars and nobody can profit, even a very large so, uh, so if you are gonna have a benefit or you've promised to have a benefit, make it something, some other event and not the close, closing for this project, okay. Uh, and then religious activity uh, would be the other one. Um, again, schools, K through 12 schools, school staff are not eligible to apply in this program. Um, and then uh, costs that are not directly related to the project. And oftentimes, uh, those costs relate mo mostly to organizations. So for instance, if you include in the budget that we're gonna pay your telephone bill, or we're gonna pay your um, <laughs> internet bill, or uh, you've got staff and they're paid staff and they're gonna be working on this project and we're gonna pay them and we're gonna pay them and you're gonna pay them, that gets very sticky. So you wanna be really clear cut about what these funds are gonna pay for uh, in terms of your organization costs. Mm -hmm. So let's say if we were, if our organization was showcasing, let's say it's a video project or something with a bunch of kids and mm -hmm. there is a cost associated with doing that on, at our organization in mm -hmm. terms of an AV tech or something, can we include mm -hmm. something like that? I think you'd probably want to include a percentage of that percentage. person's time okay. because the idea is you don't want to leave questions for the reviewers to say, wow, it looks like this person's on staff but they're working on this project and they're asking money to pay this person that they're already paid by the organization. So it's very fuzzy, it leaves questions and you know, it just, you don't want to, you want to make it really, really clear. And you can, you, can, you can clarify that in the narrative, but most especially in the budget. You can clarify that in the budget and then in the narrative you can say, Larry Jones is on our staff, but he works half time. This is going to be the other 50%, you know, that we don't pay for, or something like that. Mm -hmm. What about um, if you're expecting funds from other other sources? Other sources that 
you know, the timing is different, but it's, you know, you're expecting transportation to come from somewhere mm -hmm. else. And so if you, in the, and when I get to the budget, I'll certainly talk a little bit more about that, but um, yeah, any other uh, applications that you have submitted you want to include in your budget, and you can say not confirmed. Submitted, but not confirmed. Uh, but if you're thinking, oh, I want to apply for this, this, and this, but I'm not sure if I'm going to, but I'm going to put it anyway. Don't do that. Just put the ones that you have, that you know for sure have been submitted, and you're just waiting to hear. Things that you're doing in the fall, for instance. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so these funds will not uh, pay for purchase of equipment or food. Um, I'll get right to you. I'm just going to finish one clarification on that. You can, however, use these funds to rent equipment, but you cannot purchase equipment. Okay. Uh, could you clarify the compensation for staff, faculty, and students from the pre granting institutions? Okay, so what does that mean, this compensation for staff? Oh, for higher ed? Yeah. Um, so uh, he's asking about a, question, a clarity for uh, higher ed institutions who apply, and it says we will not, our funds won't pay for uh, faculty, staff, or students. So we're not going to pay for an administrator or a faculty member or a student of that university or college to participate in this program. So we'll, we'll pay for teaching artists or other staff. The idea is that we're not paying uh, staff from that university or that college. <coughs> okay, so the other item is culminating events. Um, this program will not fund a production or an exhibit or a film screening by itself. It, this program is really all about the artistic process, about the um, you know, creative process, and, um, uh, and the, the instruction the instructional side of it. Um, events are actually not required in this program, so if you do not have an event, a formal event at the end, it's not, uh, it's totally okay, it's not required. Um, people have them because kids love to showcase what they've created and they wanna you know, show it either to the community, their parents, to their peers, and it's a great opportunity for them. But uh, the expectation from our office is not that it be something grandiose and expensive because that's not the purpose of these funds. But we will certainly you know, support your time, the te teaching artist time, to put those on. Um, but we don't want that to be the bulk of the money that you're requesting. Okay. Um, so, and then projects funded by, uh, by our office through other funding programs. Uh, there are the one that's exception to the rule of civic partners. So if you receive civic partners uh, funding, that's organizational funding, you can still apply for the cards. You want to make sure that whatever, you, whatever you're doing, if it's youth related with civic partners funding, you, it cannot be the same project that you propose uh, in the cards. Um, okay. Okay. So this is um, the review criteria. This is what the um, the panelists are going to be uh, looking for. You know, in while they're reviewing their your application, and it's consistent for all the applications. Um, Again, it's the artistic artistic elements and that's the teaching artist experience, uh, whether the project is an age-appropriate activity, um, and the depth of learning in the arts. So we have had projects, for instance, that are submitted where it's a one-time, 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 and this and that and the other, so it's just uh, way more of uh, an introductory introduction rather than an in-depth one of, a, of an art form. I have a uh, question mm -hmm. um, for you. So these of access for you based on facilities, location costs, culture, mm -hmm. etc., etc. But mm -hmm. so in, in this particular program, uh, the population of kids are going to be kids who have several risk factors, and so there's no cost, there's no prior experience with the art form, but they are going to be interviewed. And their selection is not based on their thinking power, 
is really based on those risk factors. Is that considered a barrier by your firm? Because, look, because we've done extensive coverage. Mm -hmm. Is that considered a barrier in the interview process? Um, you know, that's kind of up to each program to determine if there's a registration form, uh, what your own criteria is for kids. Um, we're really uh, more wondering how you know, how open the process is to any kid. And let me let me just clarify a little bit about this because we have we do fund many many programs who actually have a combination where uh, programs do have a fee. They charge uh, a fee for their classes, uh, but then our funds will help pay for scholarships for kids or will help defray some of the expenses so that kids who can't pay the fee can participate. And that's and, and it's okay to, to have a program that charges. It's totally okay. Because we're we're thinking that that is part that you're generating revenue to cover your expenses and that's totally all right. Um, yeah. It, is that sort of similar like that we would cut out fees completely to turn it into a free program? Does that make, sort of make sense? Like it's not scholarship based, it's just getting rid of the cost completely. Yeah, and you can, I mean, you can say, you can, there's a lot of ways that you can kind of rationalize it or yeah. at least define it. <laughs> um, so you could say we're asking for $5,000 because we do have, it's a fee-based program, but we want to invite kids who wouldn't otherwise be able to come if we didn't. And we know how much it costs for kid. We want to, uh, we know what $5,000 $5, is going to cover, how many kids, so we're, we want to invite 10 kids. I mean, I'm just throwing out numbers, I have no idea, but <laughs> I'm not calculating it, but it's just that kind of thing. So I don't want to, I don't want to, um, discourage people from uh, having programs where the group that are fee-based because that's totally, there are families who can't afford to pay for classes and as I said, it is a uh, revenue generating uh, part of your program, uh, but for those programs that are smaller um, and they don't have and they're not fee-based, then this money's great because it pays for all of the costs so that kids don't have to, um, to pay, so. So is that similar to the stipend that you talked about earlier? You well, the stipend is for uh, highly at-risk kids mm -hmm. to encourage them to come. So that's a that's different. That is different. But because um, you can have kids who are not at risk, mm -hmm. but whose families, they you know, let's say you're charging, I don't know, what three hundred dollars for for uh, for class, mm -hmm. and they just there's no way they can come. They're not at risk, but you know, they live in the neighborhood where your project is, you'd really like them to come, but they can't because they can't they can't afford three hundred dollars. So that would be what these funds would be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have any guidance on the stipend, like what that should look like? Um I can you know, um there isn't. I think every program is different, but I'm happy to talk with you about that and I can talk with anybody about that if you want to give me a call because every program is so different and every art form is really different. So, um, so I'm happy to, to chat with you about that. Um, okay, so where was I? Yeah, so ease of access uh, and that, uh, this is where the, the transportation, um, the facility, so part of what you wanna consider here is if, you're, if your program is um, in Southwest Seattle, and you're you're going to partner with Nathan Hale High School. That's going to be really challenging to try to get kids from Nathan Hale to go out to West Seattle. So just kind of think really locally about um, you know kind of t doing a uh, some kind of inventory of the neighborhood where you're going to offer your program and see who's is there a church, is there um, you know. Um, you know, school is, you know, other agencies, uh, any, any resources that you can tap that who are right there, they can easily walk to your program. That's the ticket. That's what you want. Because that's really going to uh, encourage kids to just come because it's right there. Um, and cost, of course. And, and like I said, you can have fee-based programs, but hopefully our funds can offset some of those expenses. and, and uh, and open the doors to some kids who wouldn't otherwise be able to participate. Uh, and then cultural integrity, um, 
if your program is offering cultural reinforcement of a particular ethnicity or uh, country, of, uh, then you know what the panel is looking, what the reviewers are looking for, are uh, the the experience of the teaching artist who will be imparting that culture uh, and that history or you know that language uh, that they either work with a master artist from that uh, community or they themselves are a traditional artist in that art form and that's basically what that what that means as well. Um, and lastly sound project plan and budget and again whatever the scope of your project is, be it two months or be it the whole year, that the what you've described in the plan, what you've described in that teaching plan, and the budget, that it all is in sync, that it makes sense, that it reflects um, the number of teachers, of teaching artists, uh, and how many classes and so forth. And that's, that's the other um, component that the reviewers are looking for. And I, like I said, I do have uh, one sample budget sheet um, in, the, in the back that I will, um, that I will go over. Um, this is about funding, contracting, and payment. Uh, so compensation and how you get your payments. Um, and how are we doing on time, Tony? What time is it? It is 5.44. Okay, great. So I'll, I'll go pretty fast. Um, okay, so again, you can request up to 10000 or, you know, minimum $2,000. Um, matching funds are not required in this program. Uh, a mix of funds, however, is strongly encouraged. Um, and with the mix, mix of funds, that includes in-kind or donated, anything that's uh, donated in your program. Is, has a dollar value, so you want to put a dollar value on that, whether it's a graphic designer, whether it's somebody donating snacks, or somebody um, giving you rent-free space or equipment. You know, find out what the value of all that is. Uh, someone's writing your, your proposal for this application, that's time. So figure out what they would charge for that and put it in your budget as in-kind donated dollars. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have a question uh, back up about timeline and stuff. Um, since the program starts next next September, mm -hmm. and you're dealing with schools who that maybe don't have their time frame set out, um, is it is it okay to say that you would be working with uh, each school on an individual basis to? To, to fit uh, activities into their time frame and, uh, and into the instructor's time frame, but maybe have a certain number of hours that you expect to work for, per week or per month or something like that? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a really good idea to talk to whoever it is that you're gonna be working with uh -huh. uh, because they can give you some, some, at least some sense of what those parameters are for them. I, I would not try to guess okay. without talking to them because that's going to actually give you a much more accurate budget than trying to guess and then you under, under budget or it's over budget and then, you know, uh, maybe you're asking for 5000 and then you should have asked for 10 or vice versa. <laughs> so I would say um, check in with them anyway. Um, uh, an award may be less than what you requested. Uh, so again, you just want to be uh, prepared and you will have an opportunity to revamp your project so it better matches the uh, size of the award, especially if it's much lower, if it's half, you want to go back and say, okay, we won't do, you know, uh, we won't do the six months, we'll maybe do four months, or we won't uh, have five artists, we'll only have three artists something like that. So, but you get to decide that. But you do have an opportunity to scale the project back. Um, the contract, by the time, uh, if you get an award, if you get an award, you get a notification letter, I would say that that's your signal that if you have anything, any detail that's not confirmed, I would get on it that moment. Um, because you'll want to, uh, when, you're, when you're contracting, you'll, you're, we're gonna expect you to tell us. It's, you know, two artists, it's, you know, 15 kids, it's so many hours, uh, and this is who I'm working with. 
So you want to have all of that uh, pretty firm. The sooner you can get any of this, uh, any of these details, the better, because it just really um, feeds into your budget, and you have a much more accurate budget. Um, Again, the payments are in installments. You don't get the money all up front at once. Uh, you get up to three installments. So, and a lot of that depends on the size of your award, but, but it is paid out in installments. And this is not a reimbursable, so you do not submit these things to us. Uh, we have an invoice. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we've completed you know, uh, 10 of the 20 sessions, so we're gonna send in, we're gonna bill you for this, and that's it. Mm -hmm. I noticed on here, you don't have like a bottom age, like the application needs to have a bottom age, do you have actually for age limits? Well, it's, uh, it's from- I remember it was, you know, like a little below mm -hmm. the list. Okay, I'm trying to think. Uh, fifth graders, <laughs> okay, let me think. Does anybody have right off the top of their heads what the age of the are? Six, three, eleven, and eleven. Ten, eleven. I'm sorry? Ten. Eleven. Ten. Eleven, ten, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, so I think whatever the fifth grade age is, that's what is not uh, eligible in here. So it's it's really middle school and high school, and that's it. Um, and I think at the other end, at the higher end, I think um, and anybody who knows can correct me, but I think the Seattle Public Schools go, I think it goes up to 21 uh, years old, that kids can actually be in high school. If anybody wants to correct me, that, that would be great, but I think it's about 21. So that's the other end of the age spectrum that, that's included in here. Um, okay, uh, I'm almost at the end. Maybe I'll go really fast on this. Um, okay, so the deadline is February 10th. It's at 11 o'clock at night. Uh, you do not want to wait till 10.45. You want to get maybe 10.15 at the most because mm -hmm. what the application, what the system will do is it will tell you this is missing, this is missing, this is missing, this is missing, so then you have to go back. And it's it's very um, nerve wracking. <laughs> so you want to you want to maybe ten fifteen I would say at the latest um, start uh, you know kind of closing down the application for submittal. Um, we do have draft overviews uh, February one, January twenty fifth, and February one. And you know I don't know if I brought my sign in, sign up sheet or not. Uh, has anyone signed up for the draft reviews already? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And these are short. They're, they're really short. They're 15, 20 minutes. Uh, you come with one or two questions that either were challenging to you or that you're just not quite sure about. And uh, we'll g I'll give you feedback. And of course, I'm, I, I'll talk with you all over the phone as well. So you know, our, our, um, our goal is really to, to help you submit uh, a successful application. So, um, so feel free to call me or email me with any questions. Uh, notification happens uh, May tw uh, in May, and then uh, and then the projects, uh, then the contracting uh, happens probably May through June, a little bit in July, uh, and then really the projects start. Uh, if for those projects who start in the fall, they start in September, sometime in September. Okay. Um, <coughs> Okay, so let's see what else I have in here. I think the budget page is coming up. Ah, I don't need this. You know all this information already. <laughs> There's probably an easier way for me to do this. Sorry, I'm not uh, tech savvy here. So I'm, oh, oh, well, these are good resources. I see, I don't want to miss, I don't wanna miss somebody. I don't want to miss one more. Yeah, so Creative Advantage, the teaching uh, artist roster that Tony are both uh, part of and probably some of you that are uh, uh, here as well. Um, the Seattle Public School District on their website, they have uh, art standards and they have all kinds of information uh, on curriculum and probably other stuff that I don't know about because I haven't been on the website in a really long time. Uh, Seattle Teaching Artist Network, STAN, is a peer support group for teaching artists. They do not have a website, but they have, they're on Facebook, and it's really great. They meet once a month. Am I right? Yeah? 
give or take, once a month, and they're all teaching artists uh, in every art form. It's a great support group. Um, and then Arts Ed Washington is a statewide organization and it's an advo advocacy organization for arts education and they do great work. They have a principal uh, training program on arts education, it's fantastic. Um, okay, so here is the budget page and I'll try to go through this really fast. Um, so what I did is uh, I took a, a photo of the uh, budget page with a box, a note box open. You'll see these notes uh, where it says notes. If you click on the notes, a box will pop up. And the idea is that you are actually giving the breakdown of how you came to 2,400. How did you, how did you come to that number? And so the breakdown is right here in the box. And that's what the reviewers want to see. Um, and, and you want to just give numbers. Do not start writing narrative in the box. It's just the formula. They just want to know how you got to that number. Um, so wherever, uh, I opened one box, but each one of these boxes should have a note box that gives the breakdown. down, how you came to that number. Um, and just know, I'm just looking at permits, uh, the, the business license or the UBI numbers, any permits, anything like that, you can include that in your budget. Our funds will pay for that. Okay. Irene, mm -hmm. is there a recommendation uh, from the city on the range pay rate range for teaching artists and planning time? Um, you know, I think... Arts Law does, but I didn't know if they Yeah, did. Arts Law does, and we, we have gone with them, and I know that Lara has uh, another, and I haven't looked at it in a while, so I don't know. Uh, what I can tell you, she's asking about uh, the pay rates for teaching artists, uh, and we usually look at maybe someone who's had a year of experience to two years at you know maybe something like twenty five to thirty dollars an hour, uh, and then it can go up as high as ninety to one hundred depending on the level of experience and uh, and what the kids are doing. So it just it's and anything in between. So um, so you do so you, and and the reviewers are looking at the bios at the uh, resumes to see is this. Um, you know, is this fair in terms of, uh, of an hourly and based on their experience? So they are looking at that. <coughs> um, okay, and let me just see. Okay, so that was the, that was the uh, expense, and this is the income. So you can see um, the budget is really quirky. You want to include in the income, you want to include the, do the uh, in kind of the donation. We include it in both. Otherwise, it's not in balance. So, um, so this is this is the, this is how it's broken down. In the, um, one item is broken down in the contributions from family, friends, and individuals. And again, it's broken down. You can see it's like how did you come up with five hundred dollars? So that there it is. Or if you have tickets, if you have a, a production at the end, and you that part of your income is coming ticket sales and you want to say uh, $10 a ticket, we're projecting you know, 50 people will come and so that's going to generate best and we want to be conservative. Anyway, down here is non-cash income, so again, you're going to have a note box where you're going to break down all of the donated all the donated items, be it staff time, be it equipment, be it rent, be it snacks, whatever, they're all going to be total, right? They're going to be broken down right here. Okay. So, um, so again, in-kind donations, both in, in expenses and in income, otherwise it will not balance. Okay, I think that's it. Are you guys... Ready? Um.